Today we're taking a look at the Dark Rock Pro 5 and the Dark Rock Elite, courtesy of Be Quiet. These are the latest coolers in the Dark Rock 5 series for 2023. They're some of the most massive coolers that I've worked with to date, and they look pretty nice. So I'm very curious to see how they perform. Right off the bat, I definitely noticed these are a bit of an upgrade over the Dark Rock 4 series. The Dark Rock 5 Pro is geared towards cooling down hotter, overclocked CPUs, but with a little bit of focus on still remaining relatively quiet. Whereas the Dark Rock Elite is a little bit larger, is roughly the same size, but a little bit heavier. It's got a little bit more material on it, it's a touch louder, and of course, it does have that ARGB goodness. It's still relatively quiet, but it is coming in a little bit louder than Dark Rock Pro 5. It does have a little bit more cooling capacity, though. In terms of testing out these coolers, I'll be using my Ryzen 7700X gaming rig today. In terms of the temperatures, a little bit of a spoiler, the coolers work really well. We'll get to that in a little bit, though. As for the spec, the Dark Rock Pro 5 cooler is coming in at 145 millimeters long, 136 millimeters wide, and 168 millimeters tall, weighing about 2.84 pounds. It's a beast. The Dark Rock Pro 5 model is rated by Be Quiet for 270 watts worth of TDP cooling. It's got a relatively large cold plate, a lot of fins, and it's a dual fan setup. In terms of noise, I think we're doing pretty good here. It's rated for 8.9 dBA at 50% speed, 16.3 dBA at 75% speed, and 23.3 dBA at 100% speed. As for the Dark Rock Elite, we pretty much have the same physical dimensions, but it actually weighs just a hair more at 2.95 pounds. Again, massive. So this is definitely going to give the Elite a slight edge in cooling. Be Quiet rates the Elite model at 280 watts worth of cooling capacity. The sound output is slightly higher on the Elite, but honestly, it's still very tame. It's rated for 11 dBA at 50%, 19.5 dBA at 75%, and 25.8 dBA at 100% fan speed. The Elite model does afford you with some visual benefits as well as performance benefits. You do get an ARGB square on the top cover. It's a mild RGB implementation, but I like it. Not over the top, but it makes sense for a Be Quiet case. I do like RGB in my builds, but I don't necessarily like the rainbow puke, so this is definitely up my alley. Both the Pro and the Elite heatsink have similar cold plates, similar heat pipe designs, and they're both dual fan towers. The Pro model does have a 135mm center fan, like the Elite, but the rear on the Pro model is 120mm, whereas the Elite rear fan is also 135 The middle fans are built into a mounting package of sorts, it definitely works, and it does work well, but I prefer to have freely mounted fans as they're just easier to replace, more standardized, and I just think it'll be less of a headache in the long run. I don't necessarily really enjoy proprietary type fan mounts. I don't think that Be Quiet will leave us hanging in terms of stopping production of these, but it is something to consider 5 or even 10 years down the road. The fans that we have here also use a different type of fan header for power. Again, it does work, but I don't really like reinventing the wheel if you don't have to. I'd really prefer the typical 4-pin PWM power connection here. These two points having been said, they are quality fans, and I really don't expect that anyone's going to have issues for quite a long time. These two factors are a little bit of downsides in general, but I still really like the Dark Rock 5 lineup. The next thing to keep in mind is with a great heatsink comes great responsibility in determining memory compatibility. The Pro 5 supports about 45mm tall VIMs, and the Elite in the stock position supports 32mm tall VIMs. But the rear fan on the Elite will actually slide up, so you can pretty much fit anything you want. I should note that the build quality of both of these coolers has been excellent. Very easy to actually work with these. The mounting system is very straightforward and intuitive. Huge upgrade over the Dark Rock 4 in my opinion. And of course, the Be Quiet equipment is always known for its quality. There weren't any sharp edges or anything on either of these heat sinks. Sometimes that is a concern with cheaper tower coolers. Both the Dark Rock 5 Pro and the Elite come with an included screwdriver, since the tower is so tall. I think that's a nice addition. I 
actually always keep these when I purchase heat sinks or get them for review because I think they're good for working on PCs and just generally good to have. So with that over, let's take a look at the temperature testing results. All of the testing was done inside of the Be Quiet Shadowbase 800 FX case with all of the case fans locked to 50% speed. The ambient temperature was roughly 79 Fahrenheit or about 21 Celsius for the tests and each test lasted one hour. The CPU that I'm testing with is of course the Ryzen 7700X. I locked the core speed to 4.9 GHz and the core voltage to 1.3 volts in BIOS. I did this in order to create a repeatable test scenario. I don't want the test conditions to change. Leaving the defaults will let the automatic voltage kind of float around and the test results won't be comparable. The locked values really give us an idea of the cooling capacity. Each cooler has a quiet mode and a performance mode. So I ran each of the tests at 50% for quiet and performance, as well as 100% for quiet and performance to get an idea of the cooling ability. The stress test application that I'm using for this is ASUS RealBench. I really like that RealBench simultaneously tests the CPU and the GPU, giving you a more real-world idea of cooling performance for your rig. The GPU that I'm using here for reference is the AMD RX 7600, so it's a solid mid-range GPU. In the first 50% quiet test mode, the Dark Rock Pro 5 had an average core temp of about 89.1C versus the Elite at 88.5C, with a total sound output for the Pro being about 292 dBA and about 30.7 dBA for the Elite. Just as a note, the sound output is measured by my phone, about 3 feet away from the PC, and it is total PC noise. So you can see, we have a small performance advantage here for the Elite Cooler. In terms of the 50% performance testing, the Pro resulted in an average core temp of about 85C at 31.4 dBA, and the Elite saw 84.5C at about 32.1 dBA. Again, a slight improvement with increased sound for the Elite model. As for the 100% quiet mode, the Pro achieved 82.9C at 31.6 dBA, with the Elite averaging about 82C at 34.2 dBA. Lastly, we have the 100% performance mode. The Pro averaged about 80C at 34.5 dBA, with the Elite managing 78.9C at 35.5 dBA. Overall, we can tell that the Elite cooler definitely has a performance advantage here. It's nothing crazy, but it's repeatable and it's really there. The Elite is going to be a little bit louder from my testing though. I was able to verify this after multiple test passes. So after testing both of these coolers, I've come to the conclusion that they're very close in terms of performance and sound. So if you really need to eke out that last few percent, you really need the extra clock speed, you want to go with the Elite Cooler. If you need to save a couple of bucks to maybe upgrade your SSD, or maybe get slightly faster RAM, or even a better partner model GPU, I would definitely save the money and go with the Pro. I like both of these coolers. They definitely look good, the Elite has RGB, they're solid performers, and the build quality and the ease of installation are major pluses. I don't think you can really go wrong here with either the Dark Pro 5 or the Elite. Hopefully this was a helpful video for you in choosing which cooler you want on your next build. Get subscribed for more component reviews, gaming builds, and some home lab server stuff.